Hi, I'm Pam Weingart, and I'm here at the Academy of the Center of Arts to talk about my latest show, which is called Ley Lines. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I um, have returned back to Lynchburg after a 15-year hiatus in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a retired uh, college lecturer, and uh, I have a studio at home, and I'm a multi disciplinary artists, which means that I use a variety of materials to talk about uh, my major content, which is uh, a focus on time and place and the movement of people in that time and place. So um, uh, I've been back in Lynchburg for five years, and uh, this show has been in the making for three years. We got cut off from the pandemic, and, uh, and now it's here. So uh, I have a lot of new work. Some of it's reflective of the last three years in which we were sort of isolated from each other. Uh, one of the pieces is the quarantine series here. Virginia was under a quarantine, and so the things that affected me during that quarantine came out in those pieces. And uh, so each of them has a, a different flavor to it. And um, I was reading poetry at the time. You get a little stir crazy when you're in pandemic. So uh, each piece has a title to a particular poem I was reading in regards to a particular situation that I was going through during the quarantine, either from um, what was happening on a national level or a regional level or just in my house. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but in the corner there's a little deer one, and I had built, I had homestead, so I had built a garden, and the deers came to visit. So that greatly impacted on my piece of art for that particular week. But most of the show has to do with returning iconography of um, power lines or still places or barn images that all are reflective of nostalgia of people being there, people having moved from there, people moving in some sort of different direction, um, or just holding still. So um, that's mostly what the show is about. I draw frequently, and so the drawing shows through, and that's where the ley lines comes in, because it's sort of a, well, it's not a faith-based thing for me, it's a spiritual thing for me, in that um, I get sort of sucked into the spaces that I'm creating, and uh, I could be at my table or easel for hours before I realize that hours have passed. So I'm sure I'm not the only one, but uh, that's the way I process my work. As far as the materials that I use, my favorite two-dimensional material is gouache, which is sort of an opaque watercolor. I love the matte feel of it. And that translates well to the more three-dimensional pieces, which include encaustic and drawing. And those surfaces are also matte and very um, tactile qualities to it. Um, and I think all of the work has that sort of tactile, you see the artist's hand in it, which is really, really important to me. Um, the time that I took, the process that I used, the materials that I used. So those are real reflective of how I think about my art in particular including, which was the newest thing this time, was making my frames, because anyone who does two-dimensional work knows how expensive making frames are. And uh, so uh, I was gifted by my husband for the holidays, a compound miter saw, and so, yay, I got to make uh, the frames for these pieces, and that was kind of an exciting thing. These series of work, I. I am very narrative, so a lot of my work are multiples. They're either series or triptychs or diptychs. But this series of work uh, uh, came out of the pandemic when we were stuck at home here in Virginia um, in our quarantine period, and uh, there was a lot going on on the outside world and on in the inside world too. And so I. Um, would respond to that. I was doing a lot of reading of poetry. And so each of these pieces is reflective of something that was either occurring within the house or within my studio or occurring outside. Um, I have a number of pieces that are oh, kind of feel like a trapped 
feeling, you know? So this is my sort of ivory tower piece, this third piece in the middle here. You know, the idea of Rapunzel where you're sort of stuck. It's a beautiful house I'm living in and it's a wonderful out yard and we're all healthy, but I can't go anywhere. So that ivory tower feeling. Um, I had it several pieces like this one where I was doing that uh, raised bed, we homesteaded, I planted fruit trees and grape trees and worked in the garden and had a pot with tomatoes in it and all that kind of stuff. And promptly the deer came to visit. So um, while I love the deer, you know, they're also <laughs> destructive. And so I had that reflection about the majesty of the deer and of nature and feeding them instead of us. So um, that was one piece. Uh, I was really... Um, bummed out by our uh, attachment to reality TV and some of these characters and celebrities who are uh, known for being famous by being famous. They're, other than that, there's nothing to them. It's a very shallow sort of existence. And so this is this piece that's all on the surface. It's very decorative. There are lots of holes in it because it's breathable space, but there's nothing there. So. Uh, all of these pieces uh, have a bit of a po piece of poetry that I was reading or a situation that was happening with the poetry and what was going on in the outside. I was really drawn to first responders and what uh, they were going through during this period of time uh, and the star of life that many responders use as a motif or a graphic for their uh, vehicles or for their um, buildings came through, I, I had that feeling that I needed to use them for that. This is about miscommunication up here. Um, there were a lot of miscommunication and misinformation that was going on. It reminded me of the telephone tree, that famous little uh, painting that Norman Rockwell did. You know, one person talked to the next person to the next person, and by the time you got to the end, it was a totally different story. So that game came through. These were the Confederate statues that we were having a big brouhaha about. Um, an important brouhaha, but a brouhaha nevertheless. And um, so all of this has to do with things that were going on. Consumerism, you know, I'm sure we all experienced the toilet paper, paper towel, and uh, basic commodities that we were really worried about. They are all different related pieces that I use to talk about things that were going on. I did a lot of hiking. You know, you could stay for distance from people, so we did a lot of hiking during this period of time. This is my garden. This is another isolation piece. This is another garden piece. So um, that's about it. I'm sure you guys are going to see all the pictures of the different artwork that's in this show. Um, and I'm very excited about all the pieces. Um, I'm, I love how they all sort of vibe after each other and bounce off of each other from one side of the room to the other, or each piece that is next to each other. I'm looking at them as I'm talking to you. And, um, and, and it, so it creates that sort of breathable space that I talk about in my artwork. So thank you for coming to the show. And I really appreciate everyone who's visited so far. And I hope to be able to talk to you about the work again in the future.